hand in hand, let's celebrate our country The best we have to give We feel so proud to be St. Lucia In paradise we live And we all have to work together To serve the land we love Wherever you may roam in this world This home you're thinking of Forward together, let's Hello and welcome to Voices of Independence, part of the celebrations of St. Lucia's 43rd Independence Anniversary. I am Marisa Joseph and we are on set in VA4 alongside two lovely and brilliant St. Lucian voices and women in their own rights, in their fields, doing incredible work, Ms. Janica Simon and Ms. Jadia Jopier Emmanuel. Welcome to our program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you want to engage in a discourse which will explore the role of women in St. Lucia historically, politically, and in our present time and development. The first question I want to segue into, and permit me to go into for you all, Ki manier de nous garder l'histoire cette nuit-ci femme ja développer pays A lot of times when we start to discuss politics and history and development in St. Lucia, the common names that come up are Sir John Compton, George F. L. Charles, but there is an absence of women. Why do you believe this exists? Uh, if I may go first, um, seeing that we're talking about politics and a lot of my life has been spent in politics, I would say that it is not that there has been the absence of women, but that when you hear the stories of um, politics in St. Lucia, it is often dominated by the voices of the men. And because historically the women um, would have performed what they like to um, term as supporting roles, it is often lost in the background. But if you speak to a lot of the men in the politics, they will tell you that their successes would never be possible without um, the strength, the passion and the motivation of the women. If we look around St. Lucia right now in the political parties, I can assure you that women are the most active voices, workers, and I also believe too that they would hold majority of the positions on the executive groups. But at the helm and in the leadership positions and at the forefront, you would usually have men. But as far back as I can recall, I can speak for the St. Lucia Labour Party, and um, the knowledge that I have too um, with the United Workers Party and the involvement of women, women have been present. If we think of people like Maroc um, being such a powerful voice and influence in St. Lucia's politics, oftentimes in terms of telling the story, you would hear the negative or you would not hear about the sacrifices made and, and you know, standing her ground when um, even her husband was used against her, for example. So I think it is now up to us as young women, as women in politics and women in, in other spheres to shape the conversation and to ensure that our contribution will not be lost in the narrative. Okay, thank you. I'm going to come back to you in a little while, but I would love to hear Janica. Please welcome Janica. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Um, let me just give you uh, offer a little correction. Janika is how you okay. correctly pronounce my name. Okay. So I know a lot of people get it uh, incorrect, but now uh, as a woman who is reclaiming her power and uh, making sure that she is uh, correctly identified on the national stage, I have decided to make it a point to offer that kind of gentle correction. I think that JDS assessment is quite accurate that a lot of times um, in politics as in other spheres of society, women are doing the work while the men are um, getting the garlands and the accolades. If you, you know, and just from my experience covering things like political rallies, for example, it's always women that are in charge of getting people where they're supposed to go, making sure that this is in place, checking with this. And, you know, you see them scurrying around the background, making sure that the event is running smoothly, that everything is going where they need to be. But, you know, um, the political leaders of the parties are, are often men with, I think, what, one sterling exception. Uh, we had um, Morella Joseph um, for, for a while. So usually the face and, and the nature of political parties is that they uh, take on the tone of their leader. 
So the face of the leader is always in the forefront. These people have been by and large men. And so we talk about prime ministers, we talk about the political leaders, but we don't necessarily talk about the people who are getting the stuff done, the day to day, the every day, knocking on doors, passing around, um, collecting data, pushing people, encouraging people, doing the committee work. Um, you know, it's, it's a very female endeavor. And I think that people may not necessarily have the right idea or the right conception of what political work is just because the face is so overwhelmingly male. I want to come to the role of the media slightly. It will come down later on in terms of social factors. Janika, when we look at the storytelling and when we review books on St. Lucia's history, it's still absent because the persons who write the stories may be men and sometimes women, and that too is still absent. So is it simply that men are the faces or the stories that we like to tell? It's always of a figurehead and we do not consider the wider community. I feel there's a, a lot of um, a lot of value in that assessment. I feel that media here in St. Lucia and, and just St. Lucian society and Caribbean society in general, human psychology, we love the flash, we love the glitz, we love the attention grabbing headlines controversy. and the controversy, mm -hmm. of course, of course. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's the stories that we tell do have a, a lot um, to do with how the public views us as an issue. But again, um, we love to know what the leader is doing. So we follow the prime minister all over the place. We follow the leader of the opposition. We follow the ministers around. Do we really get into the guts of a party, you know, internal systems and operations to see these stories, to find them and to tell them? I don't know. In society, I mean, we place women into certain roles. So um, a teacher, right? Um, we, a nurse. Um, so when we cover these kinds of stories, something happening in education, we have a lot of female teachers, administrators, people working in the ministry, so on and so forth. So you do see a female face there. If uh, the nurses are having some sort of um, industrial dispute, the people that we interview, more likely than not, would be female. But no, nobody, we, we, we have had female leaders. Mm -hmm. We have had females who lead ministries. We have um, Gilly Gobert, for example, who would have been Minister for Education. We had Dame Paulette Louise as um, our Governor General for so many years. Um, we have had women in Parliament, and these women are leaders in their own right. So in terms of highlighting them as leaders and their contribution to the political landscape and to governance, why then would the media um, still be carried away with that um, sort of obsession over the, the prime minister? Um, if I were to put it that way, why not highlight these women doing wonderful things in their specific roles? And I mean, I, I would say not all of them have been wonderful all of the times and they there are distractions along the way, but um, wouldn't you say that the, the, the media, if you, it is sort of an excuse to say that we are following the prime minister um, as the head when there are women who are leading and are decision makers in these specific roles? I definitely do not think that the media as a whole looks at, or, and, and I want to news media because you're talking about news yes, and yes, yes. that's what i know so yes, let me yes, stay yes. in my role stay in my section i i generally would not believe that we consciously look at news um, or information gathering through a gender lens i can't say that we do um you know we all gather in the newsroom for the morning editorial and our discussion is what's the big stories of the day what's happening what are we chasing what are we following so if there was something with um you know the minister for for uh cooperatives who i think is miss uh, virginia albert at this point in time uh we would i'm uh, sorry dr dr uh, virginia albert poyot we would cover the story but looking at her as a, a through that gender lens to cover it as a woman functioning in politics i don't think we're that sophisticated uh, to I, be very honest i, I don't think that we are that point. no when i say sophisticated i mean i don't think that we are and i'm looking at media practitioners in a whole mm -hmm. 
looking at what we're doing through that high level analysis. And I say high level analysis because it's something that I think you have to consciously think of, consciously be trained in, consciously be taught. So when we bring it up now, I can see, yeah, I think there is some scope or there is some merit in doing that. But, you know, yesterday, when I was, you know, trying to put together my newscast, was I necessarily thinking in that framework? Nah, I can't say that. <laughs> I can't what I, say that. What I wanted to interject with, because you were speaking about leadership, the idea of leadership for us in a lot of ways is framed from a masculine lens. Sure. And whether or not women are leading, sometimes we don't even view that as leadership, but we just assume that that's just a woman's work and not just necessarily leadership or and framing it in, in, in these kinds of words you're right um Raisa, and i think sometimes when women find themselves in leadership positions society view it as a reward for something not that they have mm. earned it or you have worked so hard to get there or that you deserve it or that you can perform the function but most times they see it as a, a reward from a man for um something that you you may have done so for example Oftentimes when women find themselves in positions, um, public positions, you would hear people beginning to question, well, um, who is a man? How, how many men did she have to sleep with to get there? So it is a, 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 our society do not view women um, as earning um, these positions. And, and so perhaps it is because we um even the leaders who make the decision sometimes you hear things like okay let's try to see if we can get at least um six women on the slate what does this tell you it tells you that um the women who find themselves in that position um sometimes it is not a true um assessment of that person's potential what the person can yeah. give there's some um, tokenism and, and, and so on. it is so, so that, that they, they do not look bad um, for the absence of women. So, and, and our, our thinking needs to change as a society, our thinking needs to change. Our leaders, the thinking need to change as well. And I know that we are at the point where women are so underrepresented that you must create space and there must be a quota, but we should not look at the quota as a maximum. It should be a um, minimum. And, and then we work it from there. I know a lot of great women who have done wonderful things, but at every step of the way, the question would be asked really do you think um this woman just got there because she's so good at what she does um she has to be this person's woman or it's because um this person is her friend and so on but when the man gets there and some of them are very incompetent we have seen ministers in government male ministers in government who would not survive on a supermarket line at Massey, but they are in government and nobody questions how they got there or anything because it's a man but if it's a woman the woman may be doing the best of her um, ability and she may be doing an excellent job, but questions are always being asked as to how did she get there? They look at how you dress, where you come from and all of these things. And a lot of these things turn away women. And when women serve in roles and they feel underappreciated, undervalued, they do not push to do more and to move forward. And it will discourage other young girls because I have to constantly um, be body shamed. I have to be analyzed in ways that I have never exposed myself before. before. And, and so, so we, we have, have a lot of work to do as a society. Can I ask a question that might be maybe a little provocative? A lot of, oh, if you look around, you see again, um, women dominating certain professions. Mm -hmm. You also see in the education sector, as you go up, you start to see the gender imbalance. Women are outperforming or female students are outperforming male students. When you get to the tertiary level, it becomes very apparent. Um, junior and middle management positions in the private sector have a lot of um, female representation. I don't know what the current you know, statistics are, mm -hmm. but you do see a lot of women out in the workforce now this is this is a significant change from you know even 20 years ago 40 60 years ago etc what do you think is the barrier that drops in between just you know regular career paths roles job duties for example and public facing 
leadership positions, politics, etc. Do you think that there's something special about those positions that make women think the ROI on that is just not? Well, you actually, when before I was going to ask some questions tied to the social oh, factors, I, the social factors, <laughs> and that's beautiful because that's the power of discourse and power sharing in conversations and the dialogue that we're supposed to be having in political parties and in different spaces that person's ego sometimes take the mix and shuts persons out of important dialogue but that's good that you pose this question because it's tied to some of the questions that i have for you guys in terms of the fact that presence doesn't always mean power and historically to time has to take shape where people not just see women there but appreciate and say okay well you have earned as jd mentioned earlier on this position and role and i respect you in that particular role and the fact remains that women still hold traditional roles while yes. also occupying the roles of middle management etc and despite that no one says well women have double or triple burdens in terms of showing up in these multiple multiplex spaces and still having to contend with the ideas well pitati domi e piamun yes Yes. And a lot of times within the St. Lucian context and also regionally, we see women coming into spaces during times of crisis. Mm. So they, they don't want women right. to, to take the helms of government Let's things when, when things are, are doing beautifully to lead. Although women are managing the crisis in families when the economy is not doing well, in the school systems, in the healthcare system, we manage crises there, but somehow we feel that women cannot lead in governance. So... I wouldn't say that there is one barrier. I think there's multiple barriers that we have to break. It's tied into patriarchy. We don't have these discussions a lot. Yes. When you hear patriarchy, people believe that, you know, you it's women trying to squeeze men out. But if people understood the, the role of feminism in bringing forward justice for everybody, ni nom ni fam, ni plus associate, we know that we want to help both men and women so that we can live fairly together. Yes. And based on your question, I'll ask another question too. <laughs> As a society, what are the norms or the value systems that you think trap us, despite the progress of being present in certain spaces, from really having more substantive roles in our society presently? But you see, the thing is, um, and, and when we assess the contribution of women to our society, the development of our society, let's just go down to the basic level, which is the household. When a woman leads a household, and she's raising her children, the first thought is something is wrong. Why? Because the man is missing. That woman would raise a decent family. And um, I mean, nobody's perfect, but that one woman would raise a decent family, have children who are um, productive and making wonderful contributions to society. Yet we are already in our, in our thinking, we have already learned that the good family and the perfect family is a nuclear family with a man a woman raising a child so the label in itself the single parent household if the single parent household is headed by a man something is wrong with that woman and and everything is wrong with the woman when the woman is left to fend for the children and raise the children on her own we have so many excuses something is still wrong men. with the woman we, it, it is, is the, the woman's, woman's problem, problem right, right? We, we have men in leadership prominent leadership positions in this country who have children that they don't care for right nobody thinks that this would disqualify them to be a leader we don't look at these things we don't judge them by this lens a woman is disqualified for a position because she's sleeping with so-and-so and she's not married. So you see, there are uneven or I, I don't I don't want to call it uneven. Let's just say that women are judged differently to men and having to deal with all of these pressures, it will cause you to second guess yourself. It will cause you to feel like you do not belong in that space. I know of uh, many women who can make wonderful contributions, but then they will say, whoa, everybody's going to talk about how I dress as opposed to the contribution that I make. Everybody's going to talk about the fact that I have two children by two different men as opposed to looking at the quality of my work, whether I am qualified to do what I'm doing. It becomes a thing if you are of a certain age and you do not have a child. And these are the pressures that women face that men ordinarily would not face in society. In, in society. We, there are barriers that we place on ourselves because of how we are treated, how we are viewed. Then there are systemic barriers 
that um, do not exist just in St. Lucia, but it is uh, an issue that we have in the region. And I see that we are making changes in, in, in some spaces. So I'm hoping that sooner rather than later in St. Lucia we'll get to the point where we can say, okay, yes, we have a woman who is the head of the Senate. We have a woman who is prime minister. We have a woman who is head of state and not just view these um, as placeholders, but as change makers powerful women who have earned their keep and we can recognize them and celebrate them for that because i'm sure being in these positions would mean a lot to to society yes, as a whole can i just add to that um you said not just placeholders and i think that that is something that we or that women need to think about because um you know you elect a slate of candidates you go into the the, the polling booth you choose from your preferred party and you hope that this makes the majority to go into parliament this is where things happen laws are made policies are made in the cabinet of ministers so the woman um on the slate of candidates of your preferred party what is that woman or what are these women what is their philosophy what are they going to be doing are they going to be lobbying are they going to yes. be fighting yes. on cabinet mondays for, for the legislation, legislation. And even to in the House of amend Assembly. the affiliation, affiliation act. act are they going mm -hmm. to be fighting for that are they going to be fighting for a, a more access to early childhood uh, education so that you have sufficient childcare so that you can go out to work? Are they going to be fighting for a change in the labor policy to eliminate this split shift system which leaves children home with nobody to care for them and that's where you have a lot of societal issues? So are these women going to be taking their male colleagues and the thing about it is that when you look at the women's uh, uh, the distribution of labor in a household sometimes men don't think about these things because they don't have to think about these things well we've taught them that they don't have to think about these yes. things because so we've taught them but let's just let's just engage with the reality that they don't have to think about a lot of these things so then it behooves if I am a woman in cabinet and we're looking at what's our policy agenda or what's our legislative agenda for the year, what is the governor general going to say in the throne speech, mm -hmm. then it, are these women fighting for the inclusion of these policy items in their government's function? What, what do you think? What, what do you think, think Janika? So, so let I, I think it's a rhetorical so question. No, I think, I think it's something we need to face. I honestly <laughs> think, think it's something to face. But 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 ladies, I don't want to curb your enthusiasm, <laughs> sure, but sure. I'm, I'm asking you to place it on pause yes, for a moment together. as we Take prepare to segue into our second segment. Sure. Viewers, I am sure this conversation has been engaging we're and started. we're just getting started. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Hand in hand, let's celebrate our country, the best we have to give. We feel so proud to be St. Lucian in paradise we live. And we all have to work together to serve the land we love. Wherever you may roam in this world, this home you're thinking of. Forward together, let's unite. The land of people and the life. Welcome back, Bienvenue viewers. We are engaged in what has been a riveting discussion with our lovely ladies straddled on either side of myself <laughs> discussing the role of women in politics development in St. Lucia as we celebrate our 43rd independence anniversary under the theme Duvo Assam, celebrating our people. Before we went to break, we were touching on issues of social ideas, practices and expectations of women and JJ would have pointed out the expectations of women in the household in particular impacting their role in political life. And I wanted to speak about the partnership that is necessary for, from men and also the allyship and support that is necessary for women to take that space so that they don't have to be fighting five other battles before actually fighting the battle of being in the political realm. Because the personal is political. People tend to believe that Absolutely. when you enter politics, the battle you fight is with your constituents and in parliament. But before you even step out of parliament, there are struggles that you face in your personal life at your home in terms of childcare, caring for your families and 
what considerations do we actually make for these things and how do men see their role in supporting the rise of women to create a better society for all solutions what do you think ladies i i think um a lot of men are intimidated okay a, a, a lot of men because again of how we are socialized and because of our history men um are taught that they should lead um and and even in a social circles too their friends may make them feel that um it is not okay if your if your girlfriend or if your wife um earns more than you it is not okay if your girlfriend or your wife is more known um than you or has a public role and so men are threatened by these things because a lot of them um think or they're taught that their role would be tied to some form of control and that once a woman becomes independent in her thoughts independent in her earning then that threatens their position in that woman's life so a, a lot of men most of the things we these attitudes we see they are being carried over into how they vote how um they when they serve on interview panels and so on the decisions that they make in terms of putting women into leadership roles a lot of them are personal conflicts that these men are facing because somehow they believe that when a woman rises it will hurt their ego or it would cause them um to lose their power and and their control over women in their lives over their own positions and so on and and that is why i i say that we need to change our thinking and realize that um how we think and how we view women in our homes how we view women in our community would ultimately affect how um or, or the place that we feel women should should hold in society and in leadership positions on the whole and then too we have women to blame as well because women should be very concerned with making space for other women okay and women should be very concerned with being the biggest champions of the cause of the woman and just before we went to break i asked janika whether she thinks women in parliament um have been great representatives of the cause of the woman and we have seen year after year they come in dressed pretty have on the beautiful suits and they look good and we are happy that they are there but where is the change that should come with the responsibility of sitting in parliament and and making laws i mean come on you spoke about the affiliation act as the promises year after year after year we will increase um the maintenance that um women are getting for 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 their children and i say it's there for everyone but i say women because most times it is a woman that is left to fend for the child on her own and and we don't hear the women in 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 parliament speaking about these things bringing the bills um um to the house and making it an agenda item so i think to women in leadership positions have also failed women i want to ask a question because i'm listening what part of me is also saying well perhaps this is a problem to that we think that it should only be a woman's concern no. to bring no. the issues across so no, no, asking, no, 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 no 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 men should do it too because for example um Leonard Montu who was just the minister with that responsibility yes, yes, yes. promised for the entire 5 years that he would do it and he did not do it and this is something that I spoke about so the men have that responsibility but I'm saying as women you should make it your business to be the biggest champion of the cause of women you know what because who feels it knows it you live through it we have seen our parents struggle through it and we know it so why then do you come into the position and all of a sudden all of these things um would just be placed on the back burner no you make space for women you fight for women and you represent women if you don't do that in my mind you have failed women and so you you may be great in managing ministry of education you may be great in doing this and great in doing that but if when i look back at your tenure i do not see that you have made a dent i don't see that you have been the champion of women and representing the things that that affect women in society i don't know that i i can um applaud you and say okay wow great This is a woman who has done wonderful and great things for women. Part of your role in my mind as a woman leader is to make space for other women, to welcome other women, make it easier for other women to sit at the table and to address the concerns of women in society. Yeah, I think that's uh, unfortunately um an accurate assessment. We have not seen that kind of passion i think inside the house of assembly or inside the cabinet of ministers and i feel like our elected representatives who are female now need to look at themselves and um 
and ask themselves whether they they have the courage and um because it, it takes courage it takes a willingness to butt heads with your colleagues it takes a willingness to um be dogged about it it takes a willingness for people to get tired of you talking about the same thing and i think i i want to mention her name because when you're talking about women leaders and and women in development space there's one person that just stands head shoulders knees and toes um, is it a above mom? everybody is it, is it else mom? we're in february so i'm thinking you're thinking about love i, I <laughs> is it the, the one with the name Amor that everyone it's on their lips? No, I'm not. I'm not actually thinking about a woman in politics. I'm thinking about a woman in Saint Lucia in the development space that people hate because she will not stop speaking. Is it you about <laughs> <laughs> the cause of women and 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 female development? That person is Catherine Seelys. So so you. This is the kind of just dogged determination you cannot have a conversation with with this person without her talking your air off about some issue or another issue or a project or some initiative and she pushes these things forward do, do you remember Flavia Cherry? I, I do. do. Do you remember she went through the very same thing because this was her agenda and she was as well? For and it. I think it's a problem that, that um, this society has that um, when women speak and try to represent other women and the issues women have, we see it as nagging. Um, but if we are tired of these issues being raised, we should also be tired of the circumstance that would lead to these Let's issues. Let's talk about stereotypes. And you know. What stereotypes do we need to break? Because you have brought up very powerful women who have made impacts in our society. I mean, not noting their impacts, but when they display passion, it's aggression. Yes. Mm -hmm. When they are committed, they, it's something they want. They, they, they're looking for something else. Raisa, I think the onus is on us as women to start learning how to ignore and how to discount these kinds of things. I'm not saying that it is right to stereotype and to attack women for their passion, but if you want to accomplish something, you cannot be daunted by the words that are thrown at you by onlookers and passers-by. You as yourself in your own knowledge of yourself and 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 it's a personal development thing as well mm -hmm. you have to know who you are where you're going what you want to do and how you're gonna get it done so and i'm and i'm, I'm speaking from personal uh experience i have been out there i have received comments some of them i have uh heard i'm sure some of them i haven't heard um you know a lot positive some negative, some um, very uncharitable. I'll, I'll put it at, as that. That's very diplomatic. And right? if I yeah. were uh, taking that and internalizing that and thinking about it, I wouldn't be able to get out of bed every day. If I had to think about the time, you know, somebody shouted at me on the side of the road because I was trying to interview them and they didn't want to be interviewed. I would never be able to go out with my mic ever again. So I think, you know, like Catherine, I'm going to call her name. She's probably going to be upset with me, but I will. Like Catherine, like Flavia Cherry, like the, the, the people that we see out there, like uh, Miss Amor. Uh, I don't think, for example, she spends a lot of time crying in her bathroom about what people are saying about her. She, know, she knows who she is, but, but the, reason, <laughs> the reason why I, I wanted to, to tap into that because we model for children, mm -hmm. because this is not just about the present scope of women who are there and who are taking space. We model for children every day what are acceptable spaces for them, what they can dream and what they can envision. Yeah. And we too need to say that it's not okay that Emma Hippolyte or um, Dr. Gail Rigobert are critiqued first and foremost on how they look, Appearance. the outfits that they wear, their sexuality, whether they can produce children or not, but rather as intelligent women who have leadership qualities, who have contributed to the development of St. Lucia, and therefore you can as well. And I, I take this from an experience of having shared an article with a group of students about Haroldine Rock, six, what, 14, 13 year olds who knew nothing about her. She's an, ex an exceptional job. And they said, Miss, I, 
I'm really happy that we have a woman who's also a farmer who's done so well. I never knew this. But what are the examples that they see on social media every day? And these are the examples, unfortunately. So we have to be conscious about the instructions, the unspoken laws of our society that tell women, you can go so far, but this is how far you go. And when you go so far, these are the expectations that we have of you and you must fulfill them. Yes. So I'm very conscious of that. And while we, we understand that you must have fortitude in the political arena, we also need to retrain ourselves so that we're not creating one or two but an entire generation. Mm -hmm. Now, now, Janika, you, you, you said a little while ago that, um, just in passing, that if you need to be sure of who you are and where you're going. And, and for example, you, you doubt any great leader, woman leader would spend time in the bathroom crying about what people say about them. No. This is something that I think we need to teach both our men and women that it is okay. It is okay to be concerned with how people view you, it is okay to feel disappointed, to, to be angered, um, and, and to not accept how people think about you. It's okay to cry about it. It's okay to curse about it if this is how you express your emotion. But it is not okay to remain in that space. You gather yourself, you gather your strength, you pick yourself up, and you go. And I'm, I'm saying this because I have been many times in my public life and in my private space, I have been at lows lows where i felt that the only way i would be able to pick myself up is if i allow myself to feel what i was feeling so my tears are my greatest healer i prefer to sit and cry about something than for me to call someone up and and, and speak to them about it and still get the sense that they're not feeling me they're not understanding me i get greater comfort in my troubles when i sit i cry about it but i'm the type of person who would not remain in that space i get up i pull myself up and i remind myself that I am Jadia Jopie and nothing is impossible and I will achieve. I just, uh, I say, okay, Jadia, this is just a bump in the road and we're going to keep going. And I have struggled a lot with my daughter to teach her that. Allow yourself to feel it. Allow yourself to cry. Allow yourself um, because it is okay to, to face the disappointments, but I want you to pick yourself up, remember who you are and keep going. And, and the reason I wanted to come back to this is because a lot of people judge women and think women cannot be leaders because they're emotional. So you see, and even our current women leaders, people think they are good leaders because there is something masculine, masculine about, about them. them. They're, They're tough. tough. But, but can, well, can, can, can emotions be branded as It's human. But, but let, me just, human. Let, me, let me just clarify. I, 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 I think that you, you gave an important, important um, caveat to what I said. And I wanted to just clarify. I don't think um, Mia more Motley now, who she is today, is concerned or is crying about something that somebody says about her. You know, that, 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 that nonchalance or that, that acceptance of herself comes from a very long road of working on, on herself. And so, yes, 100% Jadia, there, there needs to be that space to hold mm -hmm. for being human. But what I was trying to say is that exactly as you said, if you don't pick yourself up, if you right. stay in that, you're not going to get to be where yes. Miss Motley is today. And, and that's the point that I was trying to make. To segue on what you were saying and how you speak to your daughter, I think we need to acknowledge that women are the primary shapers of upcoming generations, mm -hmm. whether it is through parenting, whether you encounter the children in the classroom, um, women have a lot of influence on young lives. So not only do we need to speak to our daughters and teach our daughters, we need to teach our sons yes. how to live in a world where women are powerful and they have agency and uh, that is quite all right. And part of that comes from teaching our sons that it is okay to want to be a nurse, to want to be a teacher, to play with dolls, to nurture, to care, to do yes. soft things. Yes. Because it is almost, I will never forget, and this really struck me. Um, my son, 
he is three he was a year younger about we were in the supermarket he was having a really rough day that day and we were having a disagreement and you know already <laughs> tears tantrum crying and somebody just passed stranger we didn't know the person and said ah oh, don't cry you're such a big boy uh, i think i remember you posted about that yeah and i was like you know i appreciate the sentiment you're trying to no, calm a, an upset child but no please don't tell that to my son yes. he needs to know that crying is it's okay, okay. Yes. it is okay yes. for to, to for a boy to cry yeah, yeah because I, it's when men do not know how to manage their emotion we have all of these anger issues so we say that, that women are emotional and so we we cannot lead but all of the wars uh, have been started by angry men and a lot of the um, genocides and a lot of the uh, egregious uh, <laughs> things are being done by emotional men but anger is not viewed through the lens of emotion because it's masculine and so you can have a raging man still believing that he is in charge of all because his faculties strong. of reason and logic. I'm appreciating the vulnerability so. presented on, on both sides. <laughs> and it, it reminded me of a conversation that I had this week in a barber shop where I was pleasantly surprised by a barber inquiring about my personal life and why I wasn't a mother yet, etc. And, you know, wanting someone good to love and to support. And he told me, Raisa, you know, men in St. Lucia are in a crisis. I'm telling you from my own experience, we are in a crisis and we need to change. So these are the kinds of conversations that we need to have with one another, not from a, a place of this person is just judging me and trying to beat me down. But these improvements for both men and women impact our children yes. and allow them to be healthy and happy adults. A lot of times our discussion on youth development in the sphere of St. Lucia is employment. And employ employment is important, but before you are an employee, you are a person. Yes. So what are the values we're putting into our young people? What are the things that are being modeled for them in the homes, on the streets, about being able to feel, to express in healthy ways, not with the crutch of alcohol but Let me or just devices. explicitly draw that line between personal development among young people mm -hmm. and our um, heinous crime situation that we are facing in the country today. Mm -hmm. And people are seemingly at a loss to understand where this thing is coming from. But then you're speaking about, um, you know, your bar the, the barber who tells you that men are in a crisis. Men don't understand how to deal with their emotions. Women who nurture these men are also in a crisis because we teach them to bottle things up and we teach them that they're not supposed to be washing dishes or sweeping the floor or doing the laundry. So then they, you know, grow up to be adults and the, the whole system and cycle, cycle of, of, being of, of, of unlearning. Of there, there's a school of thought that a lot of what is wrong with our society right now is because women of how these women are raising their children. So, so we need so, to do unlearning in our own yeah. selves. Yes, so because people are saying if you if you look back to um, what society was before, it was tied to the family unit and what was acceptable as a, a family unit. Remember earlier I spoke about the fact that when you have a single parent household, it's viewed in a particular way. It does not matter if the um, head of that household is stable in terms of income and so on, it does not matter. Um, we just feel that it's a problem if it's only the woman. But now you bring up the point of how do these women socialize these children, both men and women. And then too, not just women, but there's this change in view where I think we, we um, define love in new ways. Because somehow I see from a lot of parents that their definition of love is giving the child everything that the child wants. Uh, but to what end? Are we loving them or are we slowly destroying them and setting them up to be failures and to destroy somebody else? Right. So there is really a lot, a lot to discuss on materialism, materialism and replacement and, and, and your absence yes. and everything. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I appreciate well, 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 that. These conversations matter because they're all interconnected because yes. women trying to compensate for their absence and giving materially reflects what Janika mentioned about our economic structures and how in a lot of ways, they disempower women, families, and men because 
you have women who are away from the household the children don't see them yes. when they get up in the morning and by the time they come back from work especially in our tourism sector the children are sleeping yes. so who cares for your children who raises your children yes. what and do the they absence have? maybe of that time affection and care you substitute with they material a, a tablet uh, because because i mean you you are torn yes. you don't you're not how how do you not love your children maybe by giving them the material things if you don't have the time to spend to and, them and, and do you, you spend see with if them? we were being compensated fairly um we would be in a space where we are able to manage our family time and and um our career at the same well, time no, women no, have time. to work twice as hard to learn what a man is i know I'm, I'm feeling this conversation i wish we could go on we will go on but after this short break viewers you are watching voices of independence hearing the voices of independence oh, and hopefully right. <laughs> when we come after this break we're going to talk about challenges and also opportunities for us to move the conversation forward and do better as a society in the next 43 years we'll be right back hand in hand let's celebrate our country the best we have to give we feel so proud to be St. Lucian in paradise we live and we all have to work together the land we love Wherever you may roam in this world This home you're thinking of Do for us all Forward together, let's unite Do for us all The land, the people, and the light Do for us all Welcome back viewers, we are entering our final segment unfortunately with these lovely ladies who have engaged us in a series of discussion on women and political development in St. Lucia. In this final segment we want to ask our panelists, well I won't even call them panelists because this has been a conversation among colleagues, women of substance, women of power, what their views are on opportunities as well as challenges that we have moving forward for women and political development in the same Russian landscape. Can I, can I, let me start with opportunities. I think um, St. Lucia's political climate now is ripe with opportunity. We have um, had, is it 20 years of one term administrations? Like, Think yes. back about about, about yes. two yes. decades of yes. one-term yes. administrations. Yes. That points to a deep dissatisfaction, I think, with the status quo among the populace. People want something new. People want something different. They want something other than what currently obtains. And we keep swapping back and forth in the hopes that we'd find it. What that means to me is that um, there's a lot of opportunity there. So if uh, a young woman is, is having policy ideas and, and wanting to really make an impact, I think that there's, there's some avenues there for her to uh, amass and consolidate power and maybe become you know, a force for um, you know, whichever uh, political party she leans towards or maybe create a new p uh, political party with a new philosophical mindset so i think that the, the time is ripe for women to seize that power not just in the political sphere in a whole set of avenues um i right now i'm looking for ways to move forward to advance my own personal career goals and agenda i think there's a lot of opportunity in media people are still hungry for quality information and so I am doing my best to you know grab those opportunities as they come and climb the ladder I'm very proud to say that I have opened the door for several young women to get their careers established I hope to continue being in positions and putting myself in positions where I can do that because um, as JDS said, I think it's really important to do that. And so I think now is a great time for women who find themselves mid-career or established to really look around and see, what am I doing? Um, am I making a positive impact? 
and where can I put my personal energy to, you know, just push the agenda forward a little bit. In terms of challenges, I think that, you know, the societal stifling of women's aspirations and dreams still exists. Um, if you get uh, too old without a partner or an offspring, you're kind of like, uh, what's going on with this one? And it, it, it can put a damper on, on yourself and it can stifle you. So I think those are challenges that we as a society need to address. Um, Jadia, that immediate reflexive um, question in your mind when you see a powerful woman, how did she get there? Mm -hmm. Maybe we can do some work on ourselves to recognize when we're asking these weird off questions and just realize that we are placing a, a, a burden on women that we don't place on men when we see them out in the public sphere. So I think as we're looking at Independence 43 and looking at the next uh, 43 years ahead, um, we can do some personal self-development, women and men, to just reassess the views that we hold around women in society, their place, what they should be doing, and realize that a woman's place is anywhere that she chooses, she chooses it to yeah. be. Um, whether that's a wife, a mother, a single career woman, a single parent, you know, whatever way that she uh, chooses to contribute is valid and it's her her unique path and it's it's fine, you know, you're not committing any crimes, <laughs> you're not swindling anybody on, on Tinder or elsewhere. <laughs> You're bringing in the <laughs> I had well, to. I don't say. need to be rescued. No, We're right. in the best place in Saint yeah. Lucia. We're here for. You know, We're so doing well. Opportunities and challenges. I think there are are many, but I think that with some some sober assessment, self reflection, and just a reality check or two, um, we we can we can get ourselves in a good position for the next. 43 year push that was beautiful but i have one question but i'll go to jadia first to get her view i think looking forward um from now until the next i hope it does not take us 43 years to get a woman as a prime minister of saint lucia okay we need to work towards this and and not because of how it would look or not to put us on the same level with anywhere else um but I think it is because I honestly and sincerely believe that a woman would make a wonderful contribution to this country. Seeing things through um, a different perspective, getting that passion, getting that commitment, and being able to lead with your heart, being able to um, really see things um, from perspective. And, and I'm, if this means that I'm saying that the men who have done it before are challenged, then it means that this is how you accepting it and you need to do some reflection as well to see how we can change how we view women and so from now to just now i am hoping that we can have a strong female leader emerge in this country and to take the reins as prime minister of this country there will be challenges because anytime a woman aspires to do something it's audacity um how dare you 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 are not um you are supposed to stay where you belong and so on. I'm hoping that women could remove all of the barriers that men and the rest of society placed on you and just go for it. Now, for the woman who is listening to this and it is politics is not your thing, um, because too, a lot of us have been taught that politics is a man's world, it's too nasty, you shouldn't want to go there and so on. So, um, we're not talking about that because we don't have the time. Selective selective politics, politics, uh, yes. Yes. I, I, I cannot, cannot continue, continue to not say, say politics, politics is everywhere. everywhere. Exactly. 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 But I just want to say that this mindset should be in every, um, every aspect of life. So if you are a teacher, you should aspire to lead in the school. It should not be that you cannot aspire to be principal because this person has been there for so long and this woman and what. No, everywhere that you are, if you're a restaurant worker, you should aspire to move up. You should aspire to do greater things. I do not want women to place any barriers on themselves because they feel they don't have the capacity or you do not belong. A woman can do anything a man can do and do it 10 times better. This is my um, philosophy and for me, I already know within myself that I can do anything that I want to do. So for St. Lucians, 
they are supposed to just sit and say, okay, I'm going to wait for Jadia. When Jadia decides what she wants to do, she will do it. And that's just the confidence I have in myself, whether it is in law, whether it is in politics. So many of us are saying that, by the way. So that's how I want every little girl to feel. There are obstacles, but I want you to think of you overcoming every single obstacle that society would place on you and not just in politics not just in the public sphere but in your private life as well whether it be in school and so on women we are moving up it's our time i think my final wrap-up point is to speak about consensus building because the transformation we want to see sometimes we think that it happens overnight but where we are today took time yes. and the ideas would need to form and but what are the partners that need to be involved we speak very broadly and we say women and men but what about civil society environmental groups teachers the, the church cultural yeah, groups everyone everyone, oh God. The the church. Church. everyone. that church Woo. but that's fun of the show <laughs> we, we would need another 90 minutes to have yes. a full discuss on the role of yes. all society i feel like so a lot of a lot of people get the sense that um, society right now is placing too much of a lens or focus on women or gender issues, um, especially because I think it's been acknowledged that there is a crisis, as, you're, as the barber said, in, in men. However, I think we cannot not acknowledge the historical uh barriers that have been placed on this particular sex and so there is a justified focus on development of of, of women in society I so i think that in terms of partners just like i said at the beginning of the conversation i don't think the media has done enough of a, a of a good job in terms of viewing news items and other uh, current events through a gender lens, maybe the rest of civil society also needs to put that uh, framework um, into place okay. so that their operations, their very day-to-day -day operations are conducted through that lens. And so when we realize that women do have the bulk of childcare duties how are our hiring practices reflecting that for example yeah. are we offering flex time yes. are we doing or are we just chaining people to a desk from nine to five with no consideration of when school lets out how to get mm -hmm. uh, after school activities done how to look after the, the the little kiddos you know um so i think private sector has to look at that in their hiring practices public sector has to look at that in how they develop policy social organizations have to look at that maybe um one of the charitable organizations might feel uh, moved to creating a, a little crash in an underserved area you know so that's how i think that the, the stakeholders and partners can get involved by really mainstreaming that gender lens and looking at everything in that way because everybody will tell you men and women that women build societies we are the ones that have the familial responsibilities and so we raise the generations to come so the more support that is given to women the better off everybody is going to be yes. the mom that has time to play with the child is going to um you know the, the benefits are going to accrue yes. there yes. um if you have money to make sure that your your, your kids are, are fed and, and clothed and taken care of the benefits are going to accrue there so it's not women looking for undue uh, accolades or support it's a recognition yes. Yes. that um, this gender really needs the support so that all genders all sexes are supported because we need to look at at, at the children so i think that's I think you've, you've, you've given us in a nutshell the solutions, some of the solutions yeah. to this important discussion. And as we receive showers of blessings, the only thing that I have left to say to our viewers is thank you so much for listening and to thank JD and Janika for contributing to this constructive dialogue that I hope will continue. And I hope that you understand that you too are a voice of independence and you matter to our country. Have a wonderful day.
Happy Independence. Yes, yes, the same, Michelle. Happy Independence. Yep. <laughs> Happy 43. Four together.